Hey, we live in a day where the idea of family has been so broken and tarnished by sin and Satan and by his corruption of God's originally perfect and beautiful and good creation and beautiful created order that sometimes we lose our perspective on the fact that God's original ideas are still good. And though we falter and though we struggle and though we fail in the grace of Jesus and through redemption, through the salvation story of the gospel, we can get back on the road of recovering and pursuing God's ideal. We, we, can, we can be on an upward spiral of growth instead of a downward spiral, spiral of destruction and disintegration. You can be growing forward closer and closer, not only to the image of Jesus personally, but to the image of God in your family life. So today, we're going to talk about the idea that God's original ideas are still good and we should still chase them, pursue them in his grace, in his mercy, in his blessing, despite the fact that uh, this side of heaven, it will still be imperfect. I'm Pastor Kerry. This is Growing in the Gospel. It is Wednesday as I'm airing this video, and we are Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, slow walking through the Psalms. And so I invite you today to turn with me to a new Psalm, Psalm 128. I love it when we start a new Psalm. And I don't know about you, but I am loving these this section, these Psalms of Ascent. Going through them makes me want to write a book about them. And maybe God would give me the grace and opportunity to do that somewhere down the road. But these Psalms right here, the 127, 128, they're aimed at the family. And you're going to see that. And that's not to be exclusionary because we're all invited to be a part of God's family and a part of a church family. And so regardless of what your family structure or whether you're single or married or whatever your situation, there's an application here for you. But I'm going to the high view today, tomorrow and Friday, we're going to break into, press into uh, the blessed life. What is the blessed life? And we're going to talk Friday about personal blessing amidst political turmoil in the end, in the end of this chapter, this short psalm. But today we're going to introduce it, just set it up, and uh, then go and meditate on it. So it's Psalm 128, Psalms of Ascent. It's the pilgrimage. Remember this? I've said this, I, I think now I've said this almost eight times or something. Um, these are families and villages pilgrimage, traveling to Jerusalem for their feast days and weeks, three times a year. So it's about the journey. It's about our journey with Jesus as we're on our own pilgrimage home to the city of God, the new Jerusalem. They're going to the city of God, old Jerusalem. We're going to new Jerusalem. And so their journey foreshadowed our journey. Their Jerusalem foreshadowed our future Jerusalem and theirs as well. And so these are really, really strong, applicable, helpful psalms. Um, they're songs they sang. And so I, I want you to think of these psalms. I hope you'll embrace them as prayers and as recitations and poems that you can memorize and you can use to frame your own thinking and your own value system. We fail these values, but we should never stop valuing them. We should never stop aiming at them and journeying toward them. It's, it's like the pilgrimage. They're on an uphill trek up through the mountains and the hills up to Jerusalem, and they're going to stumble and slip along the way, but they're still on the journey, and they're not going to stop until they get there. And so it is with ours. We're going to struggle and stumble along the way in the ups and downs of the journey, but we're aiming at these values. We're aiming at these high ideals that we know honor God and bring blessing in our lives to the degree that we, by God's grace and by the power of Jesus, embrace and model and live out and live out of these ideals. We're blessed. We experience the blessing. And they're not performative blessings, they're intrinsic blessings. Does that make sense? Uh, in other words, it's not that God's withholding them until we're doing good. It is that as we grow, we discover that living this way, aiming at these values, valuing these ideals, it, it's, it's, it's uh, layered and nuanced, it's built-in blessing, okay? It's intrinsic blessing. God's not withholding it. He's inviting us into it, and we opt in or opt out depending 
on our values. If we value what God values, if we journey with Jesus, if we take the pilgrimage uphill and aim at these ideals in the fear of God and the blessing, we're going to be blessed. The blessing of this journey, the outcome of this journey, I should say, is blessed. If we reject, rebel, defy, do it our own way, choose our own way, uh, build our own framework, it's not going to be blessed and it's not going to go well. That's that's kind of the ideal. So we're not performing for blessing. We're learning how to live in the blessing that's really already ours. We can deny ourselves of the blessing or we can engage it, receive it, and grow in it. But we're certainly not earning it. Okay, so with that said, let's, uh, let's read this psalm and then uh, just a couple of comments and then I'm going to send you into your day. And I hope that you will, again, if you have a family, or grandchildren, or an extended family, I hope you'll consider these things in the terms of your family. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refrain from commenting. I so desperately want to comment. Let me just start over. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the bre- eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be pleased that fears or feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. So in the highest view, God is painting a picture. That's what this psalm is. Through this poet, through this song, through this singing together, family singing these songs as they're walking, as they're marching, as they're setting up camp and breaking camp and moving forward the next day from wherever they're coming from to Jerusalem. They're passing the time teaching each other about God by singing these psalms. This is the word of God. This is God teaching us right now about his heart, his designs, his created order. And from the very get-go, this is God saying, I want to bless you. This is who I am. You don't need to be terrified of me, but you need a kind of fear that is reverential and respectful and deferential. You need a kind of fear that respects my ways, my created order, my ideas, my framework, my creation. And, and when you do, you come into relationship with me. This is an Old Testament. This verse 1 about fearing the Lord is really an, an Old Testament expression of what we consider to be New Testament salvation. It is to bow in humility and reverence before God and trust him for redemption, for salvation, and for forgiveness. It is to come into a relationship of with him of reverential fear as opposed to terrified fear. There's two kinds of fear. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. But we come into this relationship at salvation, and God is teaching us in these six verses that this is a relationship of blessing, that he's the perfect father, and that our earthly journey with our earthly families are the foreshadowing of something far greater and far more perfect and far more blessed. And I just love the idea that God is not someone to run from. He's someone to run to. He's not someone to hide from. He's someone to hide in. He's not someone to be terrified of. He's someone to reverence with an attractional kind of fear. We are magnetized towards him because he is the source of goodness and blessing. He is the source of happiness and joy and wholeness. He is the source of fruitfulness and provision and protection. He's the source of all the good things that he wants to bring into our lives. He wants to bring fullness and and full blessing and fullness of joy in his presence. He wants to bring that to our lives. Think about the phrases in this in this psalm, blessed is everyone. We'll talk about that more in depth tomorrow. Everyone that fears the Lord, that walks in his ways. Think about the provision. You'll eat the labor of your hands. Think about the emotion. Happy shalt thou be. 
Think about the fullness of life. It will be well with you. Verse 3, your, your wife, your marriage, uh, your wife will be fruitful. She'll be flourishing. The picture here of flourishing and the, and the agricultural pictures of a fruitful vine and the children being olive plants around the table, it's a picture of wholeness. It's a picture of joy and abundance and fruitfulness. It's a beautiful picture. It's a picture that Hollywood and our secular world tarnishes and trashes and, and tells us it's patriarchal and it's oppressive and all these weird words and all these extreme versions. And of course, of course, there are extreme, terrible, horrible, hideous examples of brokenness. But God's idea of a family is a good idea. And his ideals of a loving husband and a loving wife mutually blessing each other in the blessing of God, in relationship with God, and God cultivating a family like a greenhouse and growing up all the members of the family like plants, like trees, like olive trees, like a fruitful vine, and everything growing fruit and everything healthy, everything flourishing in the presence of everything else and kind of mutually feeding and blessing and encouraging and nurturing the other. This is a beautiful picture, and it's what a Christian family, it's what a godly family, it's what the family that God designed as an institution was supposed to emulate. And of course, we've all got baggage, we've all got history, we've all, we've all, we could all share the stories of wreckage in our past and the regrets of bad decisions and failures in our own lives. Uh, we, we have a, I have a strong marriage and strong family and our children love us and we love our grandchildren and, and we're all very close. But listen, even that picture, as full and wonderful as it is, it, is, it has been a, a long, arduous journey of properly dealing with failures and regrets and seeking forgiveness and reconciliation and pursuing and cultivating health in a broken world with broken selves and with flesh and carnality struggles within us. And working through it and growing through it. But but the picture that God's painting here is a good picture. It's a good gift from God. It's a blessed situation. Look at verse 4. Blessed. Verse 5, the Lord shall bless. You'll see the good of Jerusalem all the days. That's future blessing. You'll see thy children's children. Peace. That's future blessing. Generational, multi-generational blessing. So God is painting a picture of an ecosystem that is full of and flowing with blessing. Now again, in a fallen world, in a fallen creation, that blessing is often tarnished. It's often scarred. It's often wounded. It's often broken in a myriad of ways. But I just want to land here and want to challenge you to land here today. Don't throw away the baby with the bathwater and don't get to where all you can see is bathwater, okay? There's a baby there. There's a beauty there. There's an original ideal there that God still blesses as we relinquish to him, as we submit to him, as we surrender ourselves to his created order, our roles within that order, and his path of blessing in how we cultivate and nurture and lead our families and how we shape our homes. It still is a path and an ecosystem of blessing. We were designed to bless each other, and we can belong, by the grace of Jesus, to a Father who wants to bless us. So yeah, God's idea of family is still good. And I invite you to make this psalm and these psalms a prayer from your heart to your God. God, help me to cultivate these ideals and values in my family Teach us these things. Lead us in these ways. Be the God of our family. Be the God of my home. Be the Lord of my loving relationships. And he will. And it's a long journey, and it's an uphill journey, but you're still on a pilgrimage, and you're going to the city of God, and you're bringing those you love with you. So trust the designer. Trust that God's picture and God's idea is still a blessed picture and it's still worth pursuing, don't give up on it. Yes, God's idea of family is still good. And I realize if we embrace God's ideas of family in our 21st century, we are the exception. We are swimming upstream. But you know what? I'd rather swim upstream alone and experience this blessing 
than to swim downstream with all the self-destructive practices and ideas and philosophies and sin-tainted wreckage that my culture has to offer me. I am not going to buy Hollywood's lies about sex, love, and romance. I'm not going to buy the world's ideas about gender and and the sexual narrative and human uh, uh, liberty. I'm, I'm not going to buy the, the culture's ideas that these are just man-made constructs and systems that need to be broken down, marriage, gender, all these re- realities, all these battles, all these wars. No, I'm going to embrace God's definitions. I'm going to ask God to be the Lord of my home and family, and I'm going to trust, and I, I'm personally experiencing that there's blessing in this path. There's blessing in this ideal. It's an uphill trudge. It's hard work, but it is blessed. God's idea of family is still good. And that is what I have for you today. And that is the introduction of Psalm 128. We're going to dive in deeper tomorrow and talk about the blessed life. So share your comments, share the video. If you're new, stick around, click click subscribe, take the journey with us. Visit the channel and see the playlist. There's a lot of biblical studies. We recently finished Revelation. We're doing the Gospel of John. Mondays and Tuesdays, we're doing the one-year Bible journey. And I hope you'll partake in any and all of it that you can. I'm praying for you all. We'll see you tomorrow.